I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. Uh, Deacon Amen Springfield also posted on uh, a, um, a clip from a fellow named Jeremy Hill. And I'm going to let you listen to this guy's funny. <laughs> uh, the Dick and Amen clip posts this clip. So I'm going to let you um, listen to this, this clip. It's going to run a few minutes. The guy's funny. And, you know, I think he used a couple of words. He, border, he borderlines a couple of stuff. But I, I think y'all are adults. And, you know, I think y'all can handle what he's going to say. And if he says anything that offends you, Please forgive me and forgive him as well. But I thought it might be interesting to hear what he got to say. Mr. Engineer, roll that clip. Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show. I am the gentleman who has gone rogue. If you're easily triggered, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, what I'm going to do today is show you how winter has come. <laughs> for people who receive SNAP benefits, also known as food stamps. A lot of you are in trouble now because they're cutting it off thing there. So let's, let's see what happens when we have this going on. Give me one moment to pull it up on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Starting September 1st, DSS will have new screening requirements. And as a result, SNAP recipients ages 18 to 50 who don't work or volunteer 20 hours a week could lose benefits. Here's a... I think that is a great thing. Because we all know, come on, let's keep it real. We know a lot of women and men who are on these SNAP benefits are just lazy people who don't want to work. And I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm going to be my personal humble opinion, a lot of black women. Now, it's, studies have proven that it's mostly white people who are on food stamps, but I'm addressing those in my community. A lot of black women are just getting food stamps, don't want to work. And if they uh, get food stamps, they want to sell it to you. So if you want to buy a hundred, say they have a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars with food stamps, you got to pay half. You got to give them $50 for a hundred, right? So what happens is they take the money that you give them and they go out and buy more drugs, more alcohol, things that they don't need. They go buy some more five inch long eyelashes, go, buy, go buy some more 20 inch long fingernails and get some more of that old stinky um, lotion with the glitter in it and rub it all over their body and buy some Jordans. So this is what it is. It's a good thing because it comes out of our pocket. We're paying for people who don't want to work. We work all the time. And you know what's crazy? People who are really working and trying to get from point A to point B who are actually trying to make ends meet cannot qualify for food stamps. But people who don't want to work, they can get food stamps all day long. All they got to do is get a couple children and get more food stamps. Each child, they give, I know a woman right now to get $3,000 in food stamps and don't want to work. We take care of her. She own housing. We take care of her. Food stamps. We take care of her. Every type of government assisted program, we're taking care of her. Now, there are people who genuinely need it, but I'm going to tell you what I personally think. I think that number is few. I think the majority of people on these type of uh, um, government assisted programs are just slothful, lazy people. Somebody had to say it. You see it every day. You go to the grocery store and see a, uh, a woman of African descent getting $700 worth of food stamp. Buying stuff, $700 worth of food, and I'm not hating. But if you're working hard and you can barely get $400 worth of food, you got somebody who ain't working at all that can afford to get $700 or $800 or $900 worth of food. Come on, man, you know it's wrong. Could lose benefits. Here's Zoe Henry. Starving someone isn't gonna make a job easier to come by. It's just gonna make them starve. New changes for SNAP benefits are on the way for SNAP benefit recipients ages 18 to 50, and also identified as able-bodied adults without dependents. So in the eyes of the federal government, this is someone who is able-bodied, meaning that they can work or they can do um, some sort of outside um, employment or qualified volunteer work, but they don't have dependents. This group of people a lot of people on food stamps, especially the sisters, they can work. They don't want to work. All they want to do is get Perk 30s, Percocets, and get weed and zips and bags of weed and sniff powder and, and go to the club and buy thongs and pop it and twerk it and, and do all these type of things and get that old lipstick that's glossy so they, so they can suck on a man and eat his booty. I mean, that's all that's really going on. 
adults. This group of people now must meet employment requirements to get benefits. A person considered to be able-bodied without kids must work 20 hours a week or 80 hours a month. Otherwise, their benefits will be limited to three months. Within a Now think about that. 20 hours a week, 80 hours a month. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. So the rest of the time, they're just chilling, kicking their feet up, drinking Casamigos. It to three months. Within a three-month period, they would be prohibited from applying for SNAP assistance for 36 months. And that's great, but I think they need to do something where they can make it where they know you can't work to get those benefits, man. Too many people out here working hard and can't get no accessibility to this stuff, but they putting taxes, they paying taxes, putting money in the system. They put money in a system that don't even want to work for them. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to anybody out there? So I tried to warn you before things got really, really serious. When I seen that, the Louis Vuitton store, I think it was in Palm Beach or South Florida had closed down. I knew that whoever listened to me, I had to prepare them for what was about to come. SNAP benefits are being cut off, they're being reduced, and some people are being eliminated off of food stamps. Walmart is closing. A lot of Walmarts are closing down. A lot of these Walmarts are closing down because people are stealing from Walmart. That's what's going on. You see it on the news. They go in there just robbing them blind. If you was a businessman who owned the business and 85% of your clientele was coming in stealing, I'll shut it down and you will shut it down as well. And what's so sad is most of the people who are stealing out of Walmart like this, these boosters, stealing out the dollar store and everything like that, they are on government assistance program. That got money. Either they sell a little coochie on the side, they sell a little drugs on the side, they got something else going on, and then they got some dang government assistance, and then they still stealing out the store. Think about what I just said. Closings. A lot of Walmarts are closing down. What that is telling me is that the fake money has dried up, credit has dried up, and only real money is about to exist in this recession, inflation, whatever you want to call it. Right now, you're going to have to have more than a job. We've been on that, dude. I don't know what you're kind of late on that. You need to have some credit and stuff like that. You know what I mean? have to have more <laughs> than a job. I'm going to tell you something. I think, think money can make you lazy. Free money. Free money can make you lazy. It make you not want to think about how you're, you're trapped. In order to get government assistance, you have to make a certain amount of money to stay on there so you never realize your full potential. You never get to be who you could possibly be in real life, to be honest with you, because of free money. You get addicted. It ain't nothing like working hard and earning your money. It's nothing like saying, hey, I did that. I went to school for this. I went to trade school for that, and I earned this. By God's permission, I did it. By his grace, I did it. But when you got someone just giving you every damn thing, you're spoiled. The government makes a whole bunch of spoiled black women, in my most humble opinion. You're addicted to food stamps. Food stamps can be very beneficial, but do not get addicted. First of all, next month in February, they're actually cutting food stamps. And that's because they gave an extra amount of money during the pandemic. Food stamps reduce crime. If there were more people who did not have food stamps out here, they would be robbing for food. So all... Food stamps do not reduce crime, and there are still people <laughs> robbing for food. Whenever there's a riot or something like that, when the town gets shut down because they believe uh, police brutality have taken place, they shut the whole city down, break in people's um, businesses, <laughs> steal out the um, the grocery store, steal out every store, and they own government assistance. So food stamp does not prevent crime. What prevents crime is the morals and the character of that individual who's committing the crime or choosing not to commit the crime. Desperation can lead to crimes, of course, if you're desperate enough. But most times we don't live in that type of society. We don't live in a, a post-apocalyptic where we got zombies walking around. Most of these people just don't want to get out their booties and go to work. That's all this is. Go to work and you can get money to get food. So all welfare benefits help the community at large because it keeps our streets safer by providing basic necessities to people. 
The main catch is you typically have to be employed, but just not employed enough. And you have to constantly reapply every six months or so. It may vary depending on. Every six months, you got to remind the government that you lazy as hell. But you're right. <laughs> you become addicted when you limit yourself to stay within the ranges of these offer benefits. So I've literally heard people say, oh, I don't want to get a new job because I'll lose my food stamps. And when you get pigeonholed to benefits that you have no control over, that's very dangerous. <laughs> well, if you need it, you know, and it's available, definitely take advantage of it. But do not allow it to dictate how much you're making. Only apply for jobs that'll give you at least the amount of food stamps, if not even more. You heard this trash? I don't want to get a job because I might lose my food stamp. And if I get a job, I want to make sure I make the bare minimum so I can keep getting that little $200 a month. Y'all, y'all, what's wrong with you? I got one more um, clip of a woman. And I'm using this, all these clips out of fair use and this video for educational purposes. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I got a white lady here who's celebrating the fact that she's got food stamp, baby. But we're going to play that. Just going to play it right now. If I can find it. Oh, here we go. Check this out. She just went to the store, spent her food now, got all the food on the floor. On the floor. Why don't you put it on the couch or something if you ain't got no table? But it's on the dirty, stinking, nasty, roach infected, roach infected, infested floor for the kids to pick up. And she's twerking and popping it. I don't know what to say. Anyway, see y'all again. I think I might do another reaction video. I just feel kind of good. You know, I, I I apologize for some of the things that he said, and also for the blatant smoking of the cigar, and some of the words that he used and ideas I thought were perhaps a little bit on the border. Uh, but I, I let it run. And if you were offended, please forgive me. That was not my intent. Here's what I wanted to be able to do, because he needed to get his message out about how food stamps debilitate people, uh, and basically people, obviously there are people who do need them, uh, but that's not the, 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 the major issue. The major issue are people who get them as a way of income, uh, and there are a whole lot of people who hustle the system. And I wanted you to say that, but here's what I want to say to you. Um, in this extraordinary work that Almighty God, his name is Jesus, has called me to do, that Barack Hussein, the long-legged Mac Daddy Obama, is the ultimate food stamp. Now, keep in mind what you just heard, that food stamps are debilitating. Food stamps are things that are given to people where they don't have to work. Let me explain something to you. If you go back 70 years or 80 years, there was no governmental assistance. Everybody ate what they produced or what they were able to work and get for themselves. There was no government assistance that came along and gave you food stamps. There was no government assistance. Go back to that period of time. There was no government assistance that gave housing to anybody. You built your own house. You, slept, you made your bed. You slept in it. After the Civil Rights Movement and others, as it came along, the Democrats, who had once been the party of the Klan, when Winston the party of the lynchings, the Democrats figured out that the way we can deal with the so-called Negro or colored, now he's a Hamite, is start giving him things. And the more we give him, the more that debilitates him. The more that robs him of his initiative, the more that robs him of his creativity. Give him. So they started by giving out assistance uh, they used to call it ADC or something of that nature, a, a dependent, a D, dependent child. And, and then from there, they, they start building houses for him. And later on, gave him affirmative action to go to college. And if you look politically, if you're willing and honest enough to look at what the Democrats have done to the black man, now he's a Hamite. They have destroyed him. The black man of 100 years ago was a man that stood up, carried his own weight, fed his own children, stayed at home, took care of them children, took care of the wife, built the house, kept it warm 100 years ago. Now, none of that. All that's gone. 
Not because the black man can't provide, not because he can't feed, not because he can't work, but the government realized we can debilitate him. The Democrats in particular realized we can debilitate him. We can destroy him. We can take away his initiative. We can take away his creativity. And we can make him less of a threat that he is, that God has made him. So the ultimate food stamp, now you have to see it contextually and in a parable sense. The ultimate food stamp is by Obama. God Almighty, Lord, how Jesus, Lord Christ, when oh, they said we're going to give you a black president, black people went bananas. I mean, they went berserk. I mean, they went absolutely crazy. Because Obama was the ultimate food stamp. We gonna give it, I swear, I, this is the absolute truth. Maybe some of y'all weren't around. There's a woman down in Georgia who spoke for black women in America. She said, we're going to get a black president. I don't have to pay my electric bill no more. I don't have to buy gas for my car no more. We're going to get a black president. Lordy, lordy, lordy. And all over America, black people were jumping up and down like cats on a hot tin roof. Obama, you should have seen black people. Bill Clinton had been perhaps the best president that the so-called black man, now he's a Hamite, had ever seen. Bill Clinton had done a whole lot of stuff coming out of Arkansas, Little Rock. And Lord have mercy, when Obama showed up on the scene, black people went crazy as hell. I mean, they, they, you, I looked, I said, what is going on with the, we gonna get, I said, first of all, the man ain't black. But he was the ultimate food stamp. He was the ultimate black person debilitator. Now, black men ain't worth two hoots. The black woman ain't worth two hoots. Just like this young man's expressing what they do. They've lost their initiative. They're lazier than lazy can possibly be. They're not inventive. They're not creative. It is a scandal what has happened. And, and, and to, since the government, the Democrats, start realizing, just give them stuff. They don't, they've been slaves. They, they won't work. Give them the more you get. The worse they have become. It is a sin and a shame and a scandalous to look at the black man today. I'm not here because I hate him. I love him. I'm trying to tell him the truth. That's why I come and talking to you now. I love him, but he ain't what he used to be. He used to be a man. Hell, he ain't nothing no more. He ain't nothing no more. He's a government-supported government. <laughs> There's a line in, in the movie Dead Presidents where the, boy, where the fellow said, I don't have to work no more. All I got to do is just go to the mailbox once a month. It's a damn shame. They've, he's been destroyed by the Democrat. And his ultimate food stamp, his ultimate handout, his ultimate destroyer and debilitator was Obama. I swear before God, you ain't, you, you have, there has never, there has never been as much homelessness as there is in, the, in America since Obama. I mean, there have been homeless people. Yeah, the Skid Row. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. But he ain't, he don't even know how to get up and get a house. There's never been as many women and children living in shelters in the last uh, eight years since Obama. You ain't never seen nothing like the ultimate food stamp. The ultimate food stamp is Obama. And the killings, the indifference. Do not, he could not, do not consider his brother's life. The young boys, they have nothing to look up to. They will shoot you in the head with a nine millimeter and go home and eat a bologna sandwich and drink some Kool-Aid. Put that gun in the shoe, put it under the sneaker, under Mike, Michael Jordan's Nike, put it under the, the bed, go to sleep. You dead, your son is dead out there on the street. Cause no, that the ultimate food stamp is Obama. And here I am trying to say it. <laughs> then you got all these politicians. You got all these movie stars. You got all these athletes. You got all these Democrats who have destroyed. They have castrated. They don't run around here and talk about woke and talk about critical race theory and all that. But let me tell you something. Talking about how many, how many, Clan, how many members of the, how many black men have been castrated by the Klan? How many black men have been, been hung by the Klan? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. 
Let me tell you something. That 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 Democrat, that that them white Democrats, them the the the, the, the Jason. Let me tell you something. They have castrated more black men than if the Klan had a billion people from China come and help them castrate black men. Wouldn't be able to castrate as many black men as, as the Democrats have castrated. And, and check this out. You check this out. Listen, the prisons that have been built since the 1920s, 100 years ago, for black men, back in the 1920s, they may have had Sing Sing. Alcatraz, maybe they may have had a couple other prisons, <laughs> but once the Democrats Jay figured out you could debilitate this man, you could spiritually castrate him, you can make his wife a whore, you can make his children hustlers and liars by simply giving them food stamps, housing. Uh, if you will, special aid, uh, if you will, affirmative action, if you must. Give him that, and he'll never be anything. And no, the, the, the cherry on the cake, the icing on the cake, the cherry on the ice cream was to give him a black president. He went bananas, that fool, that black man. He went bananas. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. We got a black president. <laughs> and he ain't nothing no more. He ain't nothing no more. Now, I don't say this because I hate him. God knows I don't say it, but I hate him. And I'm talking a lot because I, I want him to understand what has happened to him. Let me tell you something. The number of men that have been castrated, they're not men anymore. <laughs> the, number you talk, the number of black women that have become whores and hustlers playing the game. And listen, let me tell you something. They actually get out there and make baby. There are women who will make a baby because she knows that she make another baby. She can increase her digit. She can increase her food stamp. She can increase her government support. She'll make a baby, make a baby every year and get a raise every year. The way black women get raises and get promotion is to make another baby. Lay up and make a, come on here, make a baby, make a baby in me. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. And the Democrats have told them how to do it. That's what the Democrats have told them how to do it. And that's what they do. That's right. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. But Obama, that was the ultimate food stamp. That was the ultimate giveaway. That was the ultimate affirmative action. That, that, boy, that, that was the ultimate. He was the ultimate castration. Not only that, but he's gay. <laughs> he's gay. The ultimate castration, the ultimate home wrecker, the ultimate if you're debilitator, the ultimate of ultimates of all things debauchery, the ultimate is Barack Hussein, the long legged Mac Daddy Obama. That is right. And here we are. Now, my job is to cry loud and spare absolutely nothing. Just tell the truth, just tell it like it is. And I believe that men will hear what I'm saying and realize that they're not men anymore. They're not men. And God help the men that have been born within that period of time who don't know Joseph, who don't know what it is to be a man. They think they're a man because they can rap or because I don't know what they think. They think they're a man because they, I don't know, they stink up the bathroom. You ain't no man. You don't know what it is to be a man. You ain't no man. Don't take care of your community. Let your community run down. Let people come into your community. Let these white homosexual gays, LGBTQs, and trannies come in your community and take your housing and throw you in the street, burn down your churches, bulldoze your churches, and you stand there talking about Al Sharpton is our leader. You ain't no man. You ain't no man. Let these homos take, your burn, take over your churches and then charge you rent to get in your own church. Al Sharpton says yes and amen. He is the biggest distributor of food stamp digit money right now on television as the digit distributor, Al Sharpton, uh, Obama, the ultimate food stamp. So it is a scream, but I'm here, and God has sent me, 
And I'm going to keep on crying out and sparing not. Crying aloud, pardon me, and sparing not. Until the man finally realizes that, wait a minute. What on earth has happened to us through all these programs that the government has given to us? The government, the Democrat government, have destroyed and then took our communities once they destroyed it, took our wives, our children have to go to schools that are armed camps, got metal detectors in the schools. The teachers have no desire to teach or educate all the Democrats. And we keep voting for more of it. We keep voting for more of it. Then we let these red-haired freaks, these women with these five-inch fingernails, talk to us about critical race theory, talk to us about woke, woke hell. What you talking about, woke? What are you talking about? Woke what? Well, well, the white man has done this and we got more education. Education of you, you your history? You want to know your history? No, you don't want to know your history. No, you don't. Because your history is there. You ain't never built nothing. You ain't never done nothing. You had Africa all there by itself. That great big old continent all by itself. Never built a house above two stories. Talking about your history. And it's a scram. It's a shame that all this is going on. But I thought that after listening to Jeremy Hill, I could then take off with this statement of I said that Obama is the ultimate debilitating, if you will, and debilitator of black people the world has ever seen. He's the ultimate food stamp. Me, I'm James Ebbett Manning. I'm the Lord's servant. I'm here with the truth. And we're going to change all of this. We're going to change all of this. I'm James Ebbett Manning, everybody. I've told you that. I am indeed the Lord's servant.